The production of this video was made possible by donors to the Orchestration Online Patreon initiative. Please consider adding your support to the creation of free educational internet resources by visiting our Patreon page linked below. Hey there, this is your orchestration tutor Thomas Goss. Here's a tip about an aspect of timpani playing that often gets overlooked. Phrasing. There's much more to it than a lot of developing composers may expect. Timpanists appreciate as much information as you can give them in shaping phrases. There's a misperception that timpani is just another percussion instrument, and that timpanists are just glorified percussionists. It's this kind of thinking that leads to comments in which composers who've never worked that extensively with professional orchestras suggest that timpanists get over themselves and just play a little triangle or cymbal during a tacit. This minimization of timpanists usually arises from a misunderstanding of the whole nature of their instruments as just deep, tuned bass drums. But that is as much of a misperception as defining a conductor as someone who stands in front of an orchestra for a couple of hours. There's so much more to both roles, at least at a professional level. In the first place, there's a reason why timpani is essentially its own section, standing alone or occasionally paired, more like harps and keyboards than as part of a general percussion section. It's not as if timpanists are thinking of nothing special during a tacit. Half the time, they'll be carefully retuning their kettles to exactly the right intonation, if the whole orchestra is starting to go a little flat or sharp, the timpanist may adjust their tuning to match. They may also be doing a little last-minute mental practicing, as well as selecting the exact mallets to be used. Then when they're engaged for the next bars or passages, they have to be as expressive and well-proportioned as any woodwind soloist. In a way, the job is even more difficult, because they'll also be thinking about the exact emphasis of pulse, creating character of pulse within a rhythm, and even carefully calculating any issues of lag time from the back of the stage to the front. Asking a timpanist if they wouldn't mind hitting a cymbal in between those moments is sort of like asking a surgeon if they wouldn't mind doing a little needlepoint in between heart transplants. A big footnote here. Notice the crucial words, in between these moments, which got left out of a meme version of that last sentence. This has caused some timpanists, and rightly so, to put forward that they wouldn't mind the doubling fees involved in playing a bit of cymbal or triangle here or there. I appreciate that courage and optimism, but I would only recommend such doubling in your score once you've gained some practical long-term experience with orchestral percussion. But maybe not even then. The bottom line that as a professional composer and orchestrator, I literally get paid not to add any complications to the timpanist's life by only scoring timpani parts for them and not any added percussion. And this is especially true the more intense the orchestration gets, the longer the piece, and the higher the profile of the orchestra that I work with. Don't assume that because an online poll had timpanists more or less open to the idea of doubling general percussion, that gives you permission to turn their role into a percussion section player who occasionally plays timpani. The safest approach is to always let the timpanists just do their job. If you really want to understand timpanists, it's better to think of them more in terms of horn players than drummers. Intonation is a lifelong obsession, with the player's ear their most important tool. Often a timpanist will softly adjust pitches for their next entrance during passages that are harmonically unrelated to those notes. The timpanist not only has to turn off the contrary chaos swirling around them, but also let just enough of it through in order to make any minute adjustments to the intonation then playing a note has as many issues of nuance and articulation as a horn part, often using different weight and density of sticks, and different regions of drumhead, with which to create the perfect attack. I'm giving you all this information, not to turn this into a tip justifying the timpanist's unique role, but as introduction to the necessity of scoring parts that make use of their prodigious musicianship. Timpani scoring should go far beyond just emphasizing a few notes here and there, or rolling into a tutti crescendo. But to go farther, timpanists need to know as much as possible about the context of their parts. 
In fact, the more information you can give them, the better. Timpani are capable of longer sustained notes and subtler expression than any other drummed instrument. Therefore, playing a note is about more than just the stroke, the opposite of the advice I give in 100 More Orchestration Tips, Chapter 66. A part that includes nothing but the shortest simple rhythms will tend to be separated rather than flowing. Each note muted immediately. On the other hand, timpani notation that fills in the rests will tend to be played more lyrically, almost as a singing line. To add to this sense of separation or flow, timpani are capable of any articulation style, including legato, and even more so, the ability to nuance any dynamic. Timpani can be enormously expressive, from elegant statements to towering declamations, all the way down to the subtlest of whispers. If any of these phrases are closely doubling another part, it's enormously important to mark this in the score with the words play with name of instrument, such as play with tuba or play with basses. That way, the timpanist can work with the other players to shape a phrase, instead of just following along, and for fairness's sake, also mark play with timpani in the other instrument's parts. Both parts should be marked with the same dynamics, or proportionally balanced, and the same note values. One caveat, there's no need for slurs. Save the slur for pedal changes on the same kettle. As Carl Nielsen scores in the timpani battle from his fourth symphony. Along with marking the timpani part with as much information as any other wind, brass, or string instrument, it really helps the player to understand the context of their part in the overall picture. Combined timpani parts aren't just convenient in the case of two players, they're a must, especially helpful for instances in which certain kettles may be shared or traded off. It's not unheard of for a timpani section to make their own percussion score to a work like Britain's Young Person's Guide to the Orchestra, and this is just as useful to the players, despite their independence, as any other percussionist. Finally, Cues in rhythmic and thematic context are hugely helpful, and even osias showing essential parts of other instruments with which timpani must interact. Toscanini is quoted as saying the timpanist was the second conductor of the orchestra. So imagine all the information a second conductor would need if his baton were two mallets, and included in your parts. In conclusion, let's look at a timpani solo to see how a timpanist thinks about phrasing. This example suggests specific parameters to the player. At the beginning, soft sustained pitches on E-flat and B-flat need to be centered in order to sing. The player won't put the B-flat at the bottom of the 26-inch kettle, but instead center it on the 28-inch kettle where it will sound the most articulate. Hard sticks will be needed for the precision of the dynamics as they reach forte and triple forte, and a good clean push through the crescendo which in turn could cause a clumping effect on a looser kettle. It goes without saying that the perfect fifths of the quintal harmony over the three kettles must be absolutely precise in intonation, not just for the sake of the orchestra, but in relationship to one another, for this passage to make any sense whatsoever. Toward the end, there will be a certain bounding energy to the strokes, the mallets leaping from kettle to kettle. Let's finish up our discussion about timpani phrasing with a bit of score reading. 
The framing music for this video, Carl Nielsen's Fourth Symphony, ends with a massive timpani battle. What's fascinating is not just that two timpanists are going at it hammer and tongs against each other, but that each line the timpanists play is beautifully phrased and is just as melodic as it is percussive. Enjoy that, and I'll see you again soon with another chapter from 100 More Orchestration Tips.